So we're up to um, chapter 15, page Chav Dalet, 24. This is in the fourth discourse of this long Hemshech. The Maim is Nasi. And as the Friedrich Rebbe sums up in the Mindex, basically the, the central themes that we're discussing is that the Pshittas, the formlessness of the energy is not silas, are not quite like the formlessness of the energies above Atsilas. In other words, we're discussing this uh, subtle place where something is not a container, but it still has some identity. So he explained it so far. In chapter 13, he explained it with Achlifa Dechtayu. Actually, in chapter 12, it was explained in the context of the ten spheres in Iris. He explained that that's the gvul, that the kreich gvul, that because energy and container meet, you have to say in some way the energy assumes some properties of chesed and gvul. Not only assumed, but even before it enters the container, it has something. So how the whole question here is, in the real Havon is, how, do you, how does it have something and not have it at the same time? How could it be glima and still esospheres? That's the, the so-called prevailing uh, theme that, he's, that the Rebbe Rashab is, is uh, exploring. And of course, the relevance is critical because we're talking about connecting our existence with transcendence, with divine, with godliness. And as such, it comes down to our existences definitely have a structure, has a structure, an identity, a personality. We want to connect this identity and personality to that which is beyond. We know that God, for sure, has no personality. You know, love inun midas kla. Love, you know, you can say in the guf v'leitz musadam v'leyadam leimachshavesem achshavesechem. You know, all the expressions that beyond. So how does the beyond structure connect to structure? So the key thing is that atzilus is the for now. Is the interface later? Kesa will become play a bigger role, and Chachma, etc., etc. So Atzilus has two things in it: as something that represents the divine, so called shapelessness, or transcendence, and the Kalim, the containers represent that the Eris, the energies, and the Kalim represent the structure. So here's a place where structure meets beyond structure, but when they meet, it also has to meet in a way. So that's why the Eir has elements of structure in it, not quite shaped and defined like, like the containers, but something is there. And of course the containers have very clear identity. Now this doesn't resolve all the problems with the interface. There's plenty of issues, but this is what he's addressing here. Remember, it's just the beginning of the Hemshech. So in, the, in this, I'm just explaining why we need this, why is it so important, you know, why it's so relevant to go through pages and pages of analyzing. So say the eight is something, glima, that's it, who cares? Why do you have to constantly find this place? You know, why, why make us crazy, basically? You know, to the point of trying to figure out why form doesn't have a form, does it not have form? I'm saying this because you don't want to just get stuck in the seichel of it and understand what, what, what's the compelling reason that's going there in the first place. This is the reason. Because the bottom line is you need to, to connect these two and so on. And we need to connect it on our terms. You can't just say, that God can connect everything. So the first thing was establishing that. In chapter 13, he went into Achlifa Duchtayu. Achlifa Duchtayu basically is a Kabbalistic concept from Zayar and, and Eitz Chaim and so on. Reversal of roles. It's a role reversal. The fact that sometimes something that is a personality of Chesed can behave like Vuda tells you right away that it's not completely formed. Because like he says, we just learned this in the past chapter, Kalim can never change. I'm actually in chapter 13. Kalim cannot change. A keli that's chesed cannot become a gvur. But they have his calibers, no? Okay. So, but he said that's not enough. One second, one second. I'll get to that in a second. Hold on. We learned that later also. Kalim on their own, that's their personality. If they can change, then, we'll, then again, existence doesn't have a structure. An apple doesn't become an orange. And, and, a, and a plant doesn't become an animal. That's that. I'm not talking about evolution, how one thing can grow into another, but generally speaking, the distinction 
is critical to structure, to existence. So the fact that you see there's a change of personality, like I use the example, Hillel, Kempaskin, in a strict, strict way, Gvura, and Shameh, Kempaskin, Chesed, even if it's exceptions, that tells you right away that there's something that has shape and no shape. That's essentially the proof. And he explains the reason for it is because Seichel itself is beyond direct form, even though Shmaiva Avtali, when they taught their ideas in the abstract form, had in it the potential of Chesed and Gvura, which is why Hillel took out Chesed, leniency, and Shammai took out Gvura. So, so there's a certain element of amorphous, but it's not completely formless. The proof is that Shammai and Hillel can go back to their teacher, and they go back to the Seichel, they can come away with a different conclusion. And that can be coming from the containers, because their containers Chesed and Gvura. So how did they suddenly come to how does Chesed, a personality, suddenly assume a Gvura Dika stance? So you have to say that the Eir has in it something. The Kali brings it out, generally, but the Eir has the ability to shift that, which also teaches us something else in Aveda. It's not just an example that this, that's not completely formless. It also means that we have the flexibility. Because you see, in the key thing with structures, you could always argue, our structure is, def- is so defined, there's no way you can ever really change it, the world. This tells you that even Shaman and Hill in Kalim can also change. Understand? So they don't change necessarily from a Chesed Gura personality, but they change their position, in, which means that the world is not a static, a, a, a rigid system. In other words, what I'm saying is the air allows, let's put it this way, like he says later, Rach Kekona. The air introduces a certain flexibility in person. Not, not, not that, that you change who you are, but change your attitude. So it means you can, like I was going to say later, a lot later, with Tanya Tikkun, that you can tolerate another person who can have his scholars. Now, the word his scholars is interesting you ask that, is because he did say that his scholars, there was a parenthesis in chapter 13 about his scholars. Oh, right there, chapter page 22. He said, Ach, Yochelish is our scholars. But as I explained it, the fact that uh, that that that, that Shami could have says in Vodu means also the containers, or let's put it the energies. In other words, it's not a chlifa dechtai. Remember, we discussed this. What do you need to have a reverse of role? Why don't you just say this is kalos? Chesed has Vodu in it, and Vodu has Chesed. Um, Chesna has Gvurin and the Gvurin has Chesna is only that it allows the fact that the Kalim have each another, that means it's not completely breaking their personality. It's not like saying, you know what, you're totally rigid Gvura, and now I'm forcing you, the Eir is forcing the Kali to no longer behave like your personality. It's saying the Kali also has in it the possibility. But the Kali on own would never paskin the Chumra if you're Hillel. The Klei Haseichel of Chesed can't paskin Gvura. So yes, that, there's, that it's not completely um, resistant, correct? So Eskalos creates the possibility, but the actuality can only happen because the pshittis of the seichel has an ability to go completely through ches, through gvur, which just shows even more how they work together. So Eskalos plus achliv v'tachtayim, eris plus kalim, you get real, real Eskalos. Now remember, later we're going to learn that, an interesting, maybe a little twist, Eir, the Eir, the Skalos of Eir is creates tolerance. The Skalos of Kalim creates real symbiosis. But there, that's not so much that Chesed becomes Gvura. Symbiosis means that they actually, um, they actually give to each other. Because once they're in Kalim, they, they really become uh, a machine that is uh, symmetrical, that works with itself. So that's a little different discussion. That's not here. Here is not, Chlifa Dechtai is not the way it's supposed to be working. It's not like every day everyone changes roles. It's not also not what is meant to be. It means it's possible, but but to, to make make it lechatchilah this way that gvur every time is working with chesed, then what you end up is disrupting it. It's almost like the four, one of those functionalities where the the keli is becoming too much like the air and is you, you lose structure. Everybody is just compromising. You no, know, the extreme opposite of talmidim and bekiva is everybody is just giving in. This is not the point. The point is there has to be tension. And there has to be different forces at work, yet there's a balance, and they all, end of the day, they all care, care about the higher purpose, Kavan Eliana, and therefore there's the scholars. In chapter 14, yeah. Is symbiosis the same as synergy? 
Not exactly. Different words. Synergy is really the energy that comes out from several things, more than the sum of the parts. Symbiosis usually means several things just working together. Symbiosis creates synergy. It's the exact, I don't know, the English uh, distinction. Maybe there is, uh, they're sure this is definitely. My understanding of symbiosis is when there's a, 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 like a mosaic. We have a whole bunch of things working together that creates a symbiotic relationship. Obviously, there's a similar terms. Synergy is when a bunch of, the, 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 the sum total that comes out of it is more than the sum of the parts, basically. So synergy adds something. Symbiosis doesn't necessarily say. Symbiosis just says they're working together. Synergy is that additional, the Eil al kulana is synergy. There's something coming, like when you have the letters, Beis, Beis, Vav, Chof, it's more than sum of four letters. It's Baruch, Baruch. So chapter 14, I just want to elaborate because especially the end didn't really elaborate yesterday. Brings this out in another way, the Maila. And here it goes into another discussion, which is the concept of Shtei Kachola V'Machshava, silence, Kachola V'Machshava. And here the Rebbe Rashab makes the case that it's the same idea, on a higher level, obviously, or it's above, because the Chlif Aduch Tayyar Shamein Hill is even here on earth. And that, that is that in the Godhead, so to speak, in the divine, there's a state of un the unconscious mind versus the conscious mind. So this is really, I think, pretty radical stuff here. That the unconscious mind is still a mind, but it's similar to that personality, that a formless type of mind. So it has a structure. But it's not quite the structure that comes into the as Seichel manifests in the Kalim of the conscious intelligence. So, before I apply it to the to God, let's apply it to how we understand it in the, in the human psychology. It would mean that before the mind, before we consciously uh, conceive of something, which is Chachma, Chachma Gluya, or it calls it Chachma Yain, Chachma La. There's that chachma, that's chachmas tuma. So it's concealed. It's more than just concealed. It's not just concealed. It's in a different uh, personality, completely. It's, it's definitely called chachma, but it's not chachma gluya. So what is it? So it's a state that he's comparing to that formless form, so to speak, like air. So he says the air of chachma is rooted in chachmas tuma. The keli of chachma is rooted in the rishima. But the Eir Chachm is rooted in Chachm Istimal. And that means that unconscious, the example I gave was about dreams. The Gemara says that Hakal Hele Chachra Pisa. If someone has a dream, it all depends on how, on the person who interprets the dream. So the question is, what does that mean? What kind of state of, is, is the dream clear or not clear? So you mean to say the dream, a dream therefore has a, a perspective, but it can go two ways. It's similar to Shmaya Vavtalian. The idea is abstract. It's not yet come into a shape and form to the extent. So it has in it the potential of two interpretations. And this is my example. I'm not saying it's an exact example. So you have to say that an unconscious mind is some type of state of intelligence that is, is so abstract that it can be, if you were able to hear its voice, it can go many ways. Similar to Shmaya Vavtalian. Not quite, because Shmaya Vavtalian is not unconscious. But, but similar, but even more so. If even in a conscious trans, transmission of ideas, an idea can be abstract, that can go in two different directions. So definitely unconscious, you can have, it's a state, amorphous state, a nebulous state. So you cannot call it just a rotsen. I want akshanus, you know, I just want, and that's it, with no seichel at all. It's definitely already chachma. But it's chachma that's hard for us to relate to because we relate to structure. So it's an example of, of this higher state that he's speaking about, that's Eir. The Eiris of the Kalim of Atsilis. What is it, Lamaila? Lamaila is Kshtei Kachol of Machshava. That when Moshe Rabbeinu complained and said when he saw Rabbi Kiva being ripped apart with a metal comb by the Romans. The Gemara is Moshe, and I looked it up. Malachim also said it. Similar thing. I think in the, in the, in the Yom Kippur it's Malachim, because I think in the Medrash Eile Eskada, it's the Malachim, but the Gemara, it's Rabbi Akiva, it's Rabbi Akiva, because he heard Rabbi Akiva's teachings, and he says, Zu teira v'zu schara. This is teira, and this is his reward. Be quiet, silence. Thus arose in my will. 
to my uh, thought. So he, so he makes it clear that you cannot say that this means that, that apparently you can say just no reason. If you just don't ask questions, there's no reason for this. He says, no, you can't say that because you can't say it's Akshonis. It would be sacrilegious to say God is just being obstinate. He says it has a tam, but it's a tam komus. It's a concealed reason. From the perspective of logic that we have, Chachm Gluya, it's like no tam because it doesn't make any sense. How could someone who's such a tater? Such a such a have such a such such a destiny, such behavior it doesn't make any sense in our time, but that doesn't mean it doesn't make sense in the time of commerce. So that's an example. It's an interesting example, but it's giving an example of a state. There is a time, there is a reason, there is chachma, but it's not chachma gulei, and he compares it to the difference between how an neshama understands godliness on its own and how an neshama understands it when it manifests in chachma. And briefly, it goes like this. A soul and a body understands Gashmis, the Mahus of Gashmis, and only the Metsius of Ruchmis. We know it exists. And the exact opposite is a Neshama without the body. Without how Neshama on its own is is Ruchmis, is Mahus. And I guess it doesn't say this, but Gashmis would be Metsius. It means it's like a novelty. It doesn't understand what it is exactly. It just knows it's there. He doesn't say that before he says it elsewhere. So that's another example. So there we go. And then he goes to the whole Venita that elaborates on this. The bottom line is that you have here the example. The Eidus in the containers is like the Chach Maguya. The Eid outside uh, on its own is like Chach Mistema and actually says that the Eid of Chach is rooted in the Chach and, and the Rotten is Lemala in yeah, yeah, yeah. Real rotsin, pure rotsin is not even what we're talking about. Pure rotsin would be keser. So that is before the acid of kochim is the makor of the kochim of the acid, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And he makes a statement that that the eight and the keli that it's more that the 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 the, the word he uses the disproportion between container and the energy. Is greater than the disproportion of the energy within the container compared to that energy the way it's the Chachmus So again, you have both sides. On one hand, it comes from Chachmus On the other hand, once it comes down the Keli, it's, it's, it's like a new existence. Obviously, again, the necessity to have this dance, to have this balance between the two extremes. She says on the bottom of the page. That's necessary also because he's going to be concluding that the Kalim are Yeshma'in, the Eiris are Igilea Helen. So here you have like an Eir Guf at two levels now. When the air goes into the container, it's. it's it assumes more of the container's properties. So in a way, it gets more distant from the pshittas. Because now it's, Beishame is now passing uh, chesed, and Beishame and gvuda, and hil chesed. So even though the air potentially could also be the other, but now in the container is one way. So it means the air. So then, the, and then there's a level of air that's more gilea helam and more connected. And the ray is that they could change. Personality. So you have here air. In other words, now in air itself, you have two levels of air, basically. Okay. And then at the conclusion, which which I just wanted to go over again because I read it quickly. After the parentheses, so he says, <laughs> this is on all levels of eris esfiris, even in at the game. Remember, we said not the game in chapter twelve. He said Atikim also has to have spirit. So he says Atikim and also has this, this seemingly contradiction. Is that Atik Is that Atik Is that the Look at the next first line of the next chapter. Oh. Let's going to discuss this. And we'll Even there in Atik. And the proof he brings is a contradiction. On one hand, we say there's chesed and gvur and atikem. 
On the other hand, it says less smell of Hayatika. There's no gvur, there's no smell, no left in Atik. Hakol Yamin. And his answer is similar to what he said about, if you remember, in the Dal Pashis. Chesed Gvura. How could you call Chesed Gvura? Because it's in the Mechin, it's still in a state of, you know, that was in chapter 12 as well. So the Eirah Gvura resides in, in the Okay, so his answer is. Right? That's where he resides, not the Kemen. The Eirek Gvur basically yeah, resides basically in there. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. He says, Yochel is. So we say, less smell of a is because it's Gvur, but in such an amorphous, abstract state. It's missing the Kemen, maybe. There is no Kemen. The yeah. It's Gvur, but it resides in the, the Chesed. That's why he's on the Yemen. Well, well, so Atik, he said there, 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 Atik, there are no Kalim altogether. He made that statement, remember? In chapter 11, <laughs> that was the proof that there's Esther Sridis without Kalim. He said Atik has no Kalim. Oh, okay. So when he says Rukhli Ches, it doesn't mean Atik. Yeah. Yeah, you have to say, he but what, he's, what he's really saying here is essentially, ah, I got it. We talked about Shtei Kachol Machshav in Hashem, in God. Then he talked about Chochm Stimah and Chochm Gluya. What he's really applying this now is how it plays itself out in the spheres. In other words, where is Shmaiv Avtalian, so to speak? Or where is, what's what, what the level of Chochm Stimah is in Atik Yemen, called it actually Chochm Stimah, Chochm Stimah, the Atik Yemen. He says a little further, you see. Have a mechst to atika, nimshech ma'akad. I have three lines of put in the chapter. Okay, so this is what he's saying here, like this. Yeah. In attic, there are no kalim. But in attic, everything is in the most amorphous state. So attic in general is like, like he says, it's air compared to zo. That's the vote here. So, so basically, what you're talking about is, is how does it play itself out? Chach mistima, chach now, in the in in the more in the whole picture of all the esses spheres. It goes like this: all the esses spheres are rooted in attic, but in attic it's unconscious. It's even higher than chach mistima, actually attic. But let's argue it. It's, it's high. It's unconscious. That's why in attic, one statement is that attic has chesed and gvura, but it's less smaller by hayatika, because it's like even more than shmaya v'avtayim, because there. Everything is amorphous. I call you mean. It could be both. Because that's the root of it, just like we said with Shemayi Vavtani, when you go to the root, the root that has that type of abstraction, amorphousness between Chesed and Gvur, it's not yet shaped, gives power that even when it's Chesed and Gvur below, they can change their the roles. Yeah. He's just explaining this so whole idea of where it plays itself out in the spirit. What's missing without this is you don't know where, like, where does it come from, this power for Chesed and Gvura to have a Khalifa Dukhtai? Like, who's telling them this? Because if you keep on going back, they're really essentially one. Right, so exactly. Or they, or, yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that, in that abstract state, like the abstract Seichel. So, Lechen, Ered Gvura, Yemish, Bechin, Ischel, Gvura, Mekom, Gvura, it's Sharshay. It's Rur, it's Gvura, Da'atik, Yemen. In other words, in Atik, if you looked, you couldn't see Chesed and Gvura. Because it's so, it's so, um, Amorphous and abstract, they're all blended everything together. Like if you look to Shmai Vavtan, you couldn't see Chesed and Vuda. But you look at the Kalim, you clearly see Chesed and Vuda. But how could there be a Khlifu? Because when they connect to that source, there can be a, a, a reversal of roles. Well, Kandal being Nishami Vihila, exactly. That even though Mitzad the Kali, it's one way, but because of the Seichel Harav, the Pshittis, they can change positions. I'll just read it quickly till then. Bim came, Masha Eris Nikla Blima, Blimuhus. I am Shalagaba Amuhus, the Esses Fir, Shema Kenna Bchinis Blima. So here's the conclusion. To say that Eris is, is formless is only relative statement. Compared to the containers, they're formless. To the point that Achiachem is Khalaf Akalim, Achiachem is Khalaf. To the point that they can actually reverse roles is, a, is proof that they are formless to some extent. Vakalim Achme Enim Ishtanum is Khalkim. 
The containers themselves, however, do not change and do not reverse roles. The Shedish HaKelem, now he's really concluding the subject. Because remember, the whole subject was, in the beginning it was all that the Kalim are rooted in the Shema, Er is rooted in the Kav. Kav is connected. The Kav connects it to a formlessness of the Erin of the Ifnat Simpson. But remember, the Erin of the Simpson doesn't have even this. The Erin of the Simpson is not even a state of unconscious. It's, you can't call it Blima and Esesphiris. Lifnat Simpson, it's completely formless. You can't call it Kav. You can't call it Kav. Right. Well, he's going to talk about this soon. The Shem 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 of the finite power. Interestingly. So even though Meichus Tima is the root of Chachma Gluya, meaning the root of the, 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 the defined Chachma, it's, it itself originates from the Kav, not from Kalim. It's because it's Eir. That's what he said. It's Eir. Remember he said the Eir HaChachma is rooted in Meichus Tima. Meichus Tima is rooted in the Kav. Shubchim says, Eir Shua Aras Eir Yen Sveh Baruch Hu. Lomayla Mayla Mamhusa Kenin. Far higher than the personality, the essence of the containers. At Shanikra Eit Slam Blima. Until, compared to it, they're called not formless. But in Kol Zehain Eir is that's the Sviris Mamash. And nevertheless, there's still ten Sviris Mamash. Hayin Shagam Ba Eir Shish Eshe Sviris Mamash. Shu Shayachim Lag Bechin Sakav Akut Hanim Shich Meir Yen Baruch because that is the difference. The Kav comes after the Tzimtzum, so the Kav already has ten spheres in it. Potential. Yeah, well, this type, well, more than just potential. Because real potential is before the Tzimtzum. Here they have, they carry, they, they're called Esses Spheres Blima. Yeah. You call them ten spheres. It's the idea, like, you know, there was, we're not talking, we're talking like Shmaya of there, there is a transmission going on. However, it's, it's still not recognizable, the Cheskin Buddha. And it has the ability to, like, I explained, because ultimately in the interface between us and the divine, Chachma plays an important role because wisdom, Midas is like Caleb. You know, you have a Midas, that's who you are. I'm not talking about now Vedas, Mishana, Teva, Midas, to change the Midas. Chesed, Hillel is always Chesed, Shama is always Gvori. Each of us have our Midas. Midas are subjective and they're locked. Seichel can refine them in this, can tame them, can channel them, control them. Seichel by nature has the capacity, we learn this a lot later, to go many ways. Like you can be, have a, you can be a, a, a Balgvur in your Midas, but if you have an open mind and you're objective, you could think like, you could, you could say this situation demands chesed. Emotionally, you may not like it, but your mind, if it's an objective, we're not talking about Sheikh the Avra Enech Chachamim, where a person is biased. You, but you can write, Seichel allows us to get beyond, we're not animals. Our Seichel does, should not, does not have to be controlled by the Midas. As a such, the Seichel itself, it can look at something, and even if it's not in your interest, you can come to a conclusion that's different than, than now obviously if I put, the fact that Seichel does affect our minds. But a mind, the way it's supposed to be, has that capacity. So it itself is a good example of, of getting beyond structure of existence and connecting to God. Because like if we only had midas, the midas would say, "Listen to me. Your interest should be only you, me, me, me. Self-interest. What do you need? To, or, what do you need to give zdaka? Why do you need to be kind? Why do you need to think about not yourself?" So Seichel says, "One second. There's a bigger picture here. Seichel helps a person get beyond selfish narcissism. So on a higher level, it means that the seichel itself is much more amorphous. It's not defined. I'm hungry." The Seichel say, you know what, today is Tisha B'Av, today is Yom Kippur, I don't fa I fast. You know, I'm just giving examples of it. But the Seichel in itself is also, there's a state of Seichel that already takes on the shape of Chesed and Buddha. And there's a state of Seichel, like unconscious, that is more abstract and has the potential to go both ways, but it's not there yet. So Seichel itself, you have many levels of abstractions. The idea is, 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 is brilliant, and you know, I mentioned the Raghav Shavar. You could strip and halacha from its specific application and get it to a very concept of something before it's applied. When you get it to the concept, it gets a lot more complicated. Like when you break down Shama and Hill, let's say, to Kayach and Pale, that Shama usually went by the potential and Hill by the actual, it's far much harder to say which one's right because each one has a merit. 
In halacha, okay, this is the conclusion. But once you go kayach and payach, someone says, one second, why am I going basur payach, not basur kayach? Let's say uh, Hanukkah. You know, lighting eight in the beginning, or eight at the end. Or uh, two bishvat. You know, shon lilonis. Does it go when it starts actually blooming or when the potential begins? Or that's, 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 that's a judgment call. You can't say one is right or wrong. And the deeper you go in the abstraction, the less conclusion is there. Because it's like, well, it's two theories. How do you, now how do you determine? Equally valid. Right, equally valid. So the more, what I'm trying to say is the more abstract you get to an idea, the more it can go many directions based on... Yeah, okay. So let's continue chapter 15. So we, ha so we have now that Eir is this in-between place. It's blima, but it's esospheres. It's formless, but it has some form of shape and form, which again is critical for us to even, even to be misbehaving on this, helps us understand to weaken the hold of defined existence, which of course is the biggest trap of all, that everything is what I see. So just even thinking about it helps you see, one second, you know, it's not exactly everything that you see. I'm saying even in a, in a therapeutic model, so to speak, you're speaking with someone and they're very adamant about something. So if you understand this, you realize one second, they're adamant right now. But inside, everybody has, there's always another scenario. Nothing is as, as, nothing is as black and white as it appears. This also helps us think like that, which, which, help, which is, of course, the big clip of the world is, I see what I see, and that's all I care about. It's, it's not correct. There's a much more bigger picture. In other words, even the idea of modern science, understanding that this table has molecules, has, has elements that have molecules, that have atoms, that have subatomic particles, humbles us. Because it means it's not, it's, not, it's not all what you see. You're not the final, your eyes and ears are not the final judge of, of life and existence. There's a reality beyond us. So it shows us that there's, it's shape, but it's shapeless. It forces you to think and realize that we don't have it all, we don't have it all figured out. Did you know that before? You know, just, but it's always good to confirm that. It's always yeah, it's always good to be reminded. I have a question. Whenever we talk about air, air cap, does this have to be in a specific world, like in in, in a, like in Atilos or Attic or Arik or somewhere? It could just be such a thing as called air cap without a specific world. Eda Kav doesn't need a world. Eda Kav, generally speaking, goes like this. I mean, you know, obviously, we're not talking Malkam Rizman, conceptually. But Eda Kav is essentially an example of the, the teacher who conceals everything before you, you know, so it's a symptom is the concealment. Then comes a, a narrow transmission, think of like spoon fed transmission. That's, that transmission right away is that, that's called Kav. That Kav is that initial transmission. Meitz Chaim, says clearly, everything is going to be created through that kav. That kav is like so-called the, the artist's pen that will shape all of existence. Igulin and Yesha. Even Makif will be created by the kav. So the kav, it says, the first thing we'll do will create a big eagle. That eagle will be Ak, Adam Kadmin. Then it'll continue and create another eagle. So it's creating both Igulin and Yesha. So between the eagles... So the, ka the kav even carries energy that it doesn't have on its own. Like, for example, it carries makif from before the tzimtzum. You know, think of it like, Taylor is also Megal, the mile of tshuva, and the mile of mitzvahs, even though Taylor, limit that Taylor itself, is not, is, is, it doesn't have the mile necessarily. So Taylor reveals everything. Even the, even things that it, it basically, it, it is the, the God's way of um, shaping existence in a way that existence can, can contain. Because, but well, obviously the car right after the symptom is in its full intensity. That's why there comes a point where the car stops. You know, the Ragwe Ak or Ragwe Atsilas, the different, you know. Why? Because in H. Chaim, he says if the car went all the way down, then the bottom would be just as high as the top. It would be the same intensity. You would lose the Maila Mata. Kav creates Maila Mata because it's a Kav and it only goes to a certain point. If it, go, oh, when, if it went, if it cut through the whole symptoms, the whole Cholo, then the bottom is just as good as high as the top. Because remember, so that's it says it says when Mashiach will come, the cow will reach the bottom. So the whole hole will be filled with alien and stuff. But the cow will come down from weaker? Yeah, yeah. The mid, absolutely. It gets weaker. And as it gets weaker, the containers manifest more. So it's a direct proportion. More air, less keli. More keli, less air. That's why also Siddha says in the human body, where's the most air? In the head. And it's the smallest part of the body. 
more more air, less kale. It has in the mind, it has the eyes, the ears, all the major functions. The body, the torso has midas maybe, but and the legs have the least amount of kechus gluim. So more keli always. It's, 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 it's basically more chamer, less suda. That doesn't mean you can't transform it, but it means that's. So let's learn Pedic Tezvod. The Yesh Lamer. We could say, the Yesh Lamer, one can say. Shuzel Gamkin in Esses Fidus Agnus is Bematsila. That this is also, what is the Zer? We'll find that in a moment. You know, there's a lot of levels he spoke about. So, the Gamkin in Esses Fidus Agnus is Bematsila, but Eden Sof Shalifni had some sort. That this is also the concealed ten spheres, the Matsilon, in the in the emanator, the source, the Ain Sof Shalifni had Simpson, in the infinite divine light before the Simpson. Let me just explain, since he's introducing Esa Sirius Agnus's name for the first time. Obviously, the word itself implies Esa Sirius Agnus's, the concealed Esa Sirius. There are different opinions in Kabbalah where that is. But the consensus at the end, that Arizal does say it's an attic. But remember, there's an attic in Atzilus the Clovis, which is Lifnat Simpson. So, Esa Sirius Agnus's usually is not actual spheres. They're the potential for spheres. The question, however, is, are they the potential like we spoke about before, like there's already a transmission, but it's just abstract, or is it the Kreich HaGvul and Einsech? Because the Kreich HaGvul, if you recall, when you compare it to the Kreich HaGvul in Atzillus, it doesn't have any Gvul in it. He said two things there, that the Gvul is like the Gvul because it's God's power, and the gvul element is completely uh, concealed because it's uh, it's overwhelmed by the, the intensity of Eden Sof. We say kecha gvul in Asmus or kecha gvul in Eden Sof in Simpson, you're not speaking about, let's say, an attic where you have chesed and gvuda, except they're amorphous, so it's less smile of a higher ticker. Okay, so he says now this. So Yeshlema, this is also, he's going moving higher, which means he's moving this whole discussion now of form and formlessness into Lifniat Simpson. Now, as we know, even figuring out Natsilas, we have plenty of challenges. Mm -hmm. So just remember, this isn't just moving it up a level, it's also moving in a completely different frame of reference, a state that is almost impossible to imagine. Yeah. Lifniat Simpson. What is Lifniat Simpson? If we could imagine it, we wouldn't need a Simpson, right? Because the Simpson, the whole point of the Simpson is to create a reality like ours. So you had to conceal that energy. So the question is, how can we understand energy that if it was revealed, wouldn't allow us to exist? The answer is, my friend, that you could. You know why? Because the Kav is God's secret way of smuggling in. So once there was the complete symptom, the fact is we could begin to understand. If it was just left without, if there was no help, concealment, we would never be able to emerge. But now that our yesh is in place, we don't have to be concerned that we're going to suddenly have place and efforts. Now, obviously, a real gili lifting at symptom wouldn't be that easy. Like he says, even Haitian Hakaz Baruch's body, even the Edzba is a little more than the measure that we can contain would burn up the existence. But he's going here to Esses Fidus Agnusis before the symptom. So what does this mean? Remember, the Kav comes, emerges from after the symptom. But the Kav started somewhere. Its energy didn't, it wasn't created after the symptom. The Simpson caused it to be a cop, but it's light. Where's that light coming from? Where's that energy coming from? She's saying, even when the cop was cold, was encompassed in the divine, infinite divine light, prior to the Simpson, which is a chiddush, and it's not all the opinions in Kabbalah hold this, which he's going to elaborate on. But, but this is what he's stating right now. Imagine like this, the Ahara in the Shemesh, right? No, like the, 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 in the yeah, that's correct, but it doesn't have Esa there. That's yeah. the thing. The Kiddush Shev is that it has Esa Sphere. And there's a Kav before the Simpson, that's not a question. Because it's, it's, it's coming from there. But it's not a panda, that's the Kav. No, but no, the Shayar by Esa Sphere is the Kiddush. Shayar by Esa Sphere is a Gnushim Shor Sheha Eris. Which means that he's establishing here, according to the opinion, that Eir has, first of all, a root. And that air has Esa spirits. Remember, there are Kabbalists that hold that air has no spirits, the muscle of the, the of, of the colored glasses. That the water 
that the water doesn't have any color. It's colored by the glasses. That's not, of course, what he's saying here. Here he's talking clearly opinion that the that, 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 that spheres themselves have shape and form. So let's, let's continue. Let's let's see where we go. The hapardis, kosov, pardis is ramak. He's of the opinion. He says that the ten hidden spheres, the hidden ten hidden spheres, are the root of the containers, meaning not the root of the energy that we just said. Behind which means im nemer she'eres the spheres and blimu hus legamri. If you say that the energies of the ten spheres are without any form at all, like the infinite divine light that's higher, altogether higher than the essence of the ten spheres. In other words, he's explaining the sheet of the part. This is the two opinions here. If energies have no muhus, which is not, remember, that's not what he's saying here. But let's just assume for a moment. Then when you say the word essence virus agnosis, how could you call that eris? It has to be the containers. There's no other place to go. Because the energies are completely like, exactly like eight and stuff that doesn't have any form and shape. He's already calling them eris essence virus. It's like, yeah. However you'd say it. In other words, according to what we're learning, saying here, mm-hmm. writing here, Shagam Ba'edis, that's the sweetest, Yeshleim Ashakis Ches Chachmu Bechas. That's the Yeshleim. So, yes, the Pardis has a different opinion. Fine. But according to the explanation here, remember, all the opinions have validity again, especially in the Shadish. You know, the Shami. <laughs> but bottom line is, but according to what it says here, that the, also the heirs of Esesus, then you could say that they do have a connection to Chachmu Bechas. Then you could say Esesus Agnosis. Are the air and the shadish of air. But actually, So according to the Ramad, Blima, you'd say formlessness means kipshute. Actually, no form at all. And when you say ten spheres, hidden spheres, you're talking about containers. But according to what we're writing here, that as the spheres have ten, what do what you how do you interpret blima? So of course the whole elaboration here, blima means relative. The containers of the ten spheres. Im kain es spheres said Musa shall a mile marashim em shosha elis es spheres that's it. So that's the conclusion. So im kain, that's the case as we just said. The ten hidden spheres, which is higher than the rishima. The rishima, as we said, is the source of the containers. Em shosha elis, they're the root of the energies. The es spheres that's it from the ten spheres of atzilus. He adds the rishima here. Interestingly, I would say, you know why. Because Rishima is what, 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 what the Ramak says is Esesvira Zagnuzis. By us, Rishima is the Shere Shaker. Yeah. And the Ramak, Esesvira Zagnuzis is the Shere Shaker. In other words, Esesvira Zagnuzis, let's put it this way. Esesvira Zagnuzis themselves, obviously we're talking the root, are the root of the energy. The Rishima is the containers of that Esesvira Zagnuzis, which is the root of the containers. That's that's the the picture here. Remember the, the word goes like this: it's aseus. But aseus definitely at symptom don't have any shape or form. So think of it like this: here are letters on a page. Letters are containers. Allah beis gimel dal. They have no meaning. When you when you organize the letters in certain into words and and, and sentences, suddenly there's an er. There's an idea. An idea. So the words are conveying an idea. The idea is er. The words are these. Definitely at symptom you had this. The words were the Asius al Kaycha Gvul. The the ideas are Kaycha Blikul. But there it's it's like the Luchas he said. It's completely you can't see Asius. It's all only the idea that is is dominant. The Tsimsum conceals the idea, the energy, the Sphere Sagnusis. I'm not talking about the air habliku, I'm talking about the air of the Kaycha Gvul. It conceals the idea, so all you have now are letters. That's the Shima. Obviously, the letters themselves are very subtle. So the, the, this will be the beginning of this is the root of the containers, which is really rooted before the symptom. But before the symptom, it's a kehar gvul that, that, that you can't do anything with. The essence is like the energy that was concealed. That is going to be the root of the of the eris. So the essence is of eris. According, so according to the shot. 
Yeah, well, according to, it's also a certain Mukabal, according okay. to how he's explaining it. In the, the Ramak, with Ramak, Bechal doesn't talk about Simpson altogether. Just remember that's also relevant. So by the Ramak, the picture goes that air never will take on shape and form. So even in its root, it's part of the alien of Libo. Containers are rooted when you say Esos was Agnuzis, is the Keicha Gvul of Ein Seif is the containers. And Keicha Gvul does not have an Eiren element, which of course will create problems later down the line. How do you create unity then? So Ein Lechanan, according to the Ramak, there's a different way of looking at unity, and it's not quite as complete and eloquent as it is of Pichsidus. But it's a legitimate approach, especially Ramak Le'yodami, not Simpson. Without the Simpson, it's almost inevitable that you have to touch like that, because the, because how then where 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 did the contain where is the where does the gvul come from? By us, the symptom is able according to the symptom, you can say the symptom conceals so it emerges. Without a symptom, you can't the the, 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 the the there's no diminishing of anything. So you have to just say that there's a dimension that God just created containers. Anyway, some other discussion, the implications of this. Is the, the Ramak writing down what the Ari does? No, no, no. The Ramak was older than the Ari. They lived the same time. But the Ramak's Kabbalah is not the Kabbalah. The Ramak it says, it says, Lo yoda He did not know from the Tzimtzum, which means even though he was there when the Arizal was teaching these things, but his Kabbalah is not with that. The Chassidus brings both. This is not about right or wrong. The Ramak has plenty of stuff that we that is said. The whole Ayan Bay starts with the Ramak. Three interpretations of Kesser. When the Ramak passed away, the Arizal was masked, and the Rebbe has a whole beautiful Sikha explaining. Where is the, what's the source of the Ramak's? Um, Ramak was a, a master Kabbalist. He learned Kabbalah he, all the way going back to the Rajbi. You're talking about mate, master yeah. Kabbalists. Where's the yeah. source of all the Kabbalah? He got it from his Rabbi. The Rizal Rabbi. was Machadish thing. The Rizal was clearly of a different league. He revealed new things that Kabbalists did not know until that point. Mm-hmm. It's hidden in it. If you look down the Zayar, the symptom is alluded to. But it's like Teresh Shabiksav and Teresh Wapet. When Moshe Rabbeinu heard Rabbi Akiva teaching, he began to cry. He began to, you know, he was disturbed because he saw Rabbi Kiva saying things that he himself did not understand, had not learned. So he said, why did you give Matan Teir to me? You should give it to me. So he says, everything he's teaching is coming from you. In other words, the Kholim are there. Same thing. Kabbalah, it, 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 the Teir is revealed and then comes generation where there's a revelation that we didn't have before. <clears throat> okay, so we got that. Yeshle Meshach is Chachma V'chesed. Nakshadik Uvimah. Now we're going higher. But the, the, the eight ain't so fast me. The divine infinite energy, I feel like Eva Gilimina Atmos, even the air, the revelation, the, 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 the energy and revelation from Atmos, Shubkin's Giliha Atsim. No, it was that part that just revealing the Atsim. Discuss that later. That there's two energies: energy to reveal the etzem, and there's energy to manifest in the in the, in, in the structure. Hadi hu mufshit the gamri mu See, it's critical now because he's now moving back. The kalim is can't change. Edus are esesvirus, but they can shift their their morphos. And then there's a state of ein sof. It's interesting. He says afilu. And what's not a filu? He's meaning his mamish it ain't so even the part that's not even the Gilead Etzel. No, he's saying even you have to say that because in other words it's higher than. It is higher. No, no, it ain't so is higher. No, yeah, you have to I mean Yeah, so what's what's it ain't so that's not Gilead Etz? Right. So I think alien self asmi must mean uh the air batsmus mamish. That's not even Gilead Etzel. Yeah. But he's saying, but even the Gilead, Mina Etzem, Gilead Etzem, Hari Humufshit Legami, is completely disrobed, <laughs> is literally the word. Stripped. Stripped. But it's more like it's not stripped, it doesn't have it in the first place. So it's not like it had it and then stripped it. it, it the bottom line, it's completely removed, abstract from beyond. I mean, all these words fit. The gamri completely memochus as ses spheres from the essence of ten spheres. The ain't a shayak shamkin spheres cloud. And there there is no spheres at all. The F says spheres are gnuses. 
Well, they're just saying like it's like no in English you could also write, uh, and this uh, and I'll tell um, you say ten spheres or should I say, yeah. you know, he, he's no this is good for the gate to be medai. No, let's see where he's going and then we'll try, try not to understand what that meant. The essence of and the concealed essence which he has been saying is the shoshia eris. Essence is the eris obviously is a is, is a general term means the ten spheres of energy bechlal. Are blima formless or blik vul and infinite relative to the ten spheres of the containers that netzalu that were that emanated from the rishima? I think I think why I'm saying efshir because esses spheres and nusus is lifting at simtsum. When you say something is legab esses spheres the kalim, you're already saying it's more the esses spheres the edus. That are so-called after the symptom. I think that's what he's hinting to. Mm-hmm. Because to say that, in other words, this goof has two levels. That's just, in other words, we have another level here. There's Eris and Kalin, there's Eris that are Mufshit and Bleak will feed the Kalin, and then there's Esfidus and Nuzis, is lifting at symptom, it's even more. But it's still not Eden Sof Atme, which is completely nothing. So you already have four levels right here. Right? Okay. Ki Ha'edis and Atzol of Shachu. Because the energies, they were emanated and extended from and were transmitted from the energy that's higher than the Rishimu, from where the Kav was transmitted, from where the Kav was drawn. From where? From where? Yeah, where was the going? On the Rishimu. Yeah, because the Kav came out from out of the Rishimu. The Shima remains after the symptom, then comes the cop. But the energies themselves are attributed to to the energy before. Remember the cop, even though the cop comes after the Shima, the cop itself is also attributed to before. So the energies come from that place. Therefore, they, they have retained the personality of that place, which is higher than, 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 the, than the defined identity of the containers. That's what he's leading to. Avalagaba Eden Sof Atzme. Okay, so that's compared. So basically, that's the case. Since the end, look, the containers come from a place of aces, of letters of defined, uh, of, of a power of defined structure, and then manifest as defined structure. The energy does not come from the same place. It has a different root. It comes from a place of air. Air hagvul, or air that's a spheris, or air that has in it ches and in its root. But it's air, it's energy. And therefore, it never has quite the the, the defined and and what's the word and uh, in, uh, rigid structure of the containers. Avil, that's compared to the containers. Avil gabe eden sef atzme. But compared to eden sef atzme, which is beyond them, hem gam ke shere shumakra gvul. There's still the root and source of gvul. There it is. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. This look, he's so taking about, whatever we discussed earlier about this. Ed having both formlessness and form, he's just level. moving it to a higher level. Exactly, and in the source. So obviously, we need to explain what is the difference between the lower level and the higher level. That's why I said it's not so. This was right now it's Asius. It's just moved it to another level. But I'm saying it's not just moving it to another place. It's a different. Let we'll, we'll talk about that some more soon. Let me just finish. Let's see. Let him. Let, I want to hear. We want to hear what he has to say. The whole picture. Then we can start distinguishing between higher and lower. Obviously. You know, look, it's hard enough to try to figure out how in the unconscious mind things are amorphous. We don't even relate to the unconscious. Here he's talking about not just unconscious, he's talking about the root of the unconscious before the symptom. That's what I'm saying. That's just, it's, it's, it's not so simple. I, I, I would say that until you don't get this, you're not going to get this. You're not going to get chapter 15. You're not going to get chapter 14. But but the point is, I think Seichel is ultimately on, on being the best muscle. Because the Seichel Shmaiva of Italian is, has, gives us some tangible thing to hold on to, because we can relate to that. What we can relate to is how it is on the Alakus level. But on the Alakus, it gets much more than that. You know, Shmaiva of Italian, I can't say we're not Shammai and Hillel, but we can understand how a Seichel is more Mufshit, is more abstract, and how Seichel then comes into shape and form. You know, we can find examples of it. But going beyond that, obviously, remember, as I said, we're after the Tzimtzum creatures. 
Also, if we can go beyond it, then it's not shtei kachol of machshava. Then we could figure out somewhat how it's going there. So it's not, we're not going to figure it out. Right. But, but through process of elimination, you can... You, the bottom line is, it gets... It, it's, it's, Maybe just three days. You know, three days. And also, you are beginning to get a take. It would be almost like the Abish is speaking to you. Even though you don't get it, but at least he's speaking to you. So, you know, you're getting a message from Lifna Tzimtzum here. So, what that does, it has to weaken the Chumri Yisakeli. But now he goes like this. Based on this, yes, the Taras. You can answer. Something that is seemingly not understood. The Bezeir be Idre. The Zayar. Idre is a section of the Zayar, but it's sometimes called separate. Idre is, is Idre Zutli, Idre Rapsi. Idre Rabba. In Pasha Nasi and Pasha Azin. Pasha Nasi is Idre Rabba. And Pasha Azin and Zaya is Idre Zutta. Idre means um, uh, chamber. chamber, group. It's Idre refers to the Chavraya of Rajbi. This is where they would like commune, I guess. So this Idre Rabba means the great chamber, small chamber. Idre Zutta is where like Weimar took place. It's where the, the, Idre Zutta is the whole discussion of Rajbi's last days. The teachings that all happened there and so on. There are a lot of secrets there. Like he writes that these were the places where the greatest secrets were revealed. So the Zutas consists consists of the most profound, probably most profound, you know, Kabbalistic secret that were revealed after that. So he says there's a question. The Bezeru Idra, Nirya, appears. The Mashma implies. Sha'atik humamash muhusivat musa. The attic is literally the essence of the, and the essence of it all. I don't know how to distinguish between Mahusa and Atzmusa, to be honest. Because Mahusa and Atzmusa is Baruch. I mean, it just in the English translation, you really wouldn't want to say it's necessarily two meanings. It's really emphasizing how essence, how essence, the essence of the essence, like. I mean, that, he doesn't say Mahusa and Atzmusa, but it's Mahusa and Atzmusa is like saying. It's like a, a reverent way of saying, I mean, you know what I'm saying? A literal translation of Musa wouldn't wouldn't do justice. It's a reverent way of saying is the essence of the essence of all existence. Technically, Muhuse is like we said, Muhus of something. Yeah, exactly. Atzmuse is usually deeper than Muhus. If you say something Atzmus Muhus, Atzmus would be deeper. You know, Atzmus is essence. Atzmus. The essence of the essence. Like if you cut to the essence, Muhus. Is a little more like the muhus of something. It would be like, like if we if we cut through this table through all of existence, the etzem, the, the core, core, core would be God. Muhus is already the muhus of of the essence. The core of the essence. Maybe, maybe, maybe the core of the essence. essence. But but you don't have to explain what that means. Also, you know, it's a, I would say. That, I mean, again, this is my own. I've never seen it. I would say atzmus is, is 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 how you know is the pure essence, and muhus is already somewhat. Um, that he's the mahus of everything that exists. You know, but Dakus the Dakus would be like mm-hmm. that Atmos is more like in a, is like beyond it all. And Mahus is like because when you say Mahus, you right away say there's a Mitsis. Sí. The Mahus of what? What Mahus Mahus of what? Atmos doesn't need anything. Atmos is just essence, essence. Anyway. Okay, so fine, no, 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 I'm, I'm not to the, no, but, but without explanation, so. that's what I'm saying. It's more than just words. Core of the essence. Because the, the core is something. <clears throat> but you see, it doesn't say Mahusay de Atzmusa. It says Mahusay de Atzmusa. So, the ink came. So, okay, that's what's Mashman. That's Nira. That Atik is literally the highest level. The ink came Yiksha Madua da Rizal. Madua ha Rizal. Omash Yesh Kamputins Lamayla Matik. He's asking a basic Kabbalistic question. So, why is that Rizal? Zid Zayin Idris Rajbi. It's in Zayin. So what? Why did these all say that there are many that there are different levels? There are common beginnings. There are some levels higher than Atik. Uh, we're going with the premise. You can't argue on the Zayr because the Zayr is like it's like the. And you also can't the argue with Ariza, and the Ariza knew the Zayr better than we. Right, so we're going with the premise that it's all based on the Zayr, so it can't be that the Ariza is saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely right, <laughs> right, right, right. And that is on Zayr have to, and especially something fundamental like this. This isn't about. You know, SS Firis, Mumorgili, Lesgili. This is talking about. Mm-hmm. What's higher than Ak? Than Atik? Ak, Adam Kadmin, Vakudim, 
Shen lemay lemati gdat sulis. Remember, I, I I gave you the map. You have Eretz of the Fnei Simsum. Then the whiteboard. Simsum. Yeah. You should have it. No, no, I I actually made it once. I make it in in, in Eitz Chaim. No, give me the Eitz Chaim. Right here. It's on top of this. Image time. Okay. Everybody thinks it's just a talking head. We're going to do some imagery here. Here's an image from Eitz Chaim itself. I should put it on the home page of our website. Okay, it's software you could like. I know, I know, I know. Okay, but I right now maybe it's it's, it's here we Who wrote the Eitz Chaim? Eitz Chaim is Arizam. So here we go. You see the image? Mm, it's like it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's here. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This image. So if you look closely, you know, where is it? Can yeah, yeah. I'm just getting it. No, anyway. Yeah, move it as close as possible to the camera. Right, there, right. There. right there. Everybody sees. So that's an image in, directly from the Eitz Chaim, which is you can rewind it and look at it again if you need to. See the cut doesn't all the way to the end. I know, of course. That's, and 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 now they see a little thicker on top. Yeah. But I don't know who made the image, but it definitely goes back. The Eitz Chaim is is the classic of the Arizal. The Arizal didn't write his own. Rabbi Chaim Vital wrote it all. But basically, what he says there is so it goes like this: uh, the Eden of the Internet seems to fill all of this. This is not in time; it's all conceptual, meaning it's happening as we speak all the time. All the time. conceals it all. Comes a kav, a ray of light. The kav creates it all. It's like the think of the kav as a easel, or the artist's easel. Easel is no. What's that? The yeah. paintbrush. The paintbrush. Yeah. An easel is a. Is the, the surface that you put, or the, Right, right, right. The I'm sorry. Right, right, right. Okay, my mistake. The the the, the, the artist's paintbrush. And the palette. Palette is the colors. Right. The mm -hmm. easel is the thing he paints on. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, okay. So, paintbrush. Then comes, kav. Then comes the first world is ak, akudim nukudim, which is toyu, vrudim is tikun. But Atik, we say, let's say Atik of Atsilis is, is after Akudim and after um, Ak. You talk Atsilis to Katis, Atsilis to speaking here, we're talking here, we're not talking anything, what he's asking here. So based on that, since from the Idra and the Zoyer, it's Mashma. So we'll get to that. That's going to be one of the important points. So Atik is between. Atik is after, he says, so Akudim, as I said, they're higher than Atik of Atsilis. And as Zayr and Nidra is Mashmah that Atik is Atzmuhus of Atzmuhus. That's the question. The Ima Yeshi Yeshlotaretz. Even though we can answer. Yeshlotaretz Zayr. Even though we can answer this. Shari Arizo, Eimer, Shez Gamke Bechinus Atik Lamay Lamach. Ah. So you can answer, like what you were just alluding to, there's a thing called Atzilis the Close. That, that you could say that Rizal also writes that there's an attic higher than Adam Kadman. That point where the Kav emerges from the Tzimtzum, from the, after the Tzimtzum, that Rizal calls attic also. Kumesha Kosebe is Chaim Shar Ches Pedike, the eighth gate, chapter five. The Elam, the Golgotha, delay, yes, Kedugmas Atik Tatsilis. And higher than the skull of Adam Kadman, yes, Dugma, there's this example. Similar to Atik of Atsilis. So here we go. How do you, so, so the Khairi have an answer right there. So the Atik of Atsilis is lower than Ak and Akudin. But that is speaking also about an Atik highest. And that Atik is you can reconcile with Zoya that that's Atmus Mus. It's all after the Simpson. How could it be Atmus Mus? That's what you're saying. We're talking about what it says. Idrizu doesn't say Simpson. It says Atik is Atmus Mus. That's his question. Forget about now what you know. Zayr it says Atik is Atmus Mugus. So he's asking the question: How could that result say that Atik is lower? That, that there are things higher than Atik. So he's saying now Lachedi could answer. Lachedi could answer that there's an Atik higher. One second, he's not finished. Let's 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 to knock out everything you know from before because it's a question based on Zayr and Arizal right now. Harigam Atik the Ak. So this is not an adequate answer. Because that's just saying, okay, Atik, correct. But, but, but Atik, according to that, is also not the high. Even that Atik is also not the highest level. It also comes 
transmitted from the kav, which comes after the tzimtzum, a mock and an empty space. Yeah, so how could you say it's atzmus mamash? No, but he wanted to just avon. He's moving atik up now. That, you know, that, that even even according to Rizal, bottom line is atik according to Rizal is not atzmus mamash. Atzmus mamash, and according to Zed, it apparently is. Gam kosher. Another question. The Beidra Amru, in the Idra it says, they say, Ba'ati came in Galgalta, Einen Mecha. Ba'ati came in is a Galgalta, a crown, a, um, a skull. Einen eyes, Mecha, and a mind. She calls a Meira, let's just finish. So even the Idra, when it talks about Atik, so the, the, this all is, is in levels. As soon as you say Galgalta, Einen Mecha, however you twist and turn it, that's not. Pure pshitas. That's our structure. She calls on Moira Allah's spheres. Ubat smusi mamish ain't shaykh sham sphere. And real atmos, literal atmos is not Krishna's sphere. Remember, this is Xidus. You learned Xidus already. He's talking now, and this is such a fun, this is extremely fundamental because here you're literally seeing how Kabbalah evolved without Xidus, you can't understand it. Because if you ruin the Idri yourself, you'd be confused by this. If you know no Xidus, the Idri says, I think it's atmos, mamish. Like he said. Who, who, who has the Just said there's Rashi Shimon by it's Zoya. <clears throat> so if you learn that Atmos is Mamish. So the first question, the first contradiction you have is that it says elsewhere Atik is lower. The second one is in the same Midr it says it has structure. So you start saying, is there structure in Atmos? I'm talking about if you learned it, you know, pure Idr. That's the questions he's asking. So we, in bottom line, you have here a perfect example of Kabbalah, Exodus, how. In, 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 in itself, it's, it's difficult to understand. You can't it's time. That, that, that well, it's some and here you're saying the structure. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, the now you told it. And according to the above, you told it. I need to see whether this chapter is in previous my modern. It's interesting to say, it looks it looks to me, it says, Chidush of the Rebbe Rashad. But I'd like to see if the Tzemach Tzedek has anywhere, but either neither. Is this, a, is this the Rebbe Rashab's original? No, 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 I'm not taking away that it could be. But often these things are, say something before. I wanted to check out this chapter. This is an interesting chapter. It's saying here very fundamental. He says, Look, according to the above, it's all it's answered. The Ma'acha Shagam B'Sheir Shemak Rakav, the Hain Commercial Call, the Hain Subsidy, the Hain Shaykh, as we said in Rubel, is. If you must have no, based on what. The Ma'acha, what's that? After we say that the root and source of the of the kav, the way it's encompassed in the divine infinite light, before the tzimtzum, there are ten spheres. See that, that Ramak doesn't say that. Yeah. So according to Ramak, you probably will not have a reconciliation. Yeah. But according to Ramak, he doesn't also know it's not that result either. So you don't have the problem in the first place. But the Ramak, what, you know, his atmos mus is different than ours. And the Kav itself, you can say, Shanim Shechayim, Mechinis Malchus, Shabba Malchus, the Esos Firas Agnus. The Kav itself, you can say, extends and is drawn, transmitted from the lowest level, Malchus of Malchus, the lowest level of the ten hidden spheres. And from the Kav was created and shaped Ak, Odom Kadu. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to read in a moment more, but, but before I go further, I don't want to go into more levels. Here. Let's just uh, explain what everybody's really saying here. So he's saying like this, that once you say that the other, it's, it's all understood, in other words, in other words the Idra, that what it says, the Idra, that Atik is Mahus Atmus is not correct. It's not the way to learn it. Atik is not the Mahus Atmus. Atik is a lower level that has within it spheres. A structure, and that's why there's no structure. So, no, it's Ein Mecha and Galgalta, correct? That tells you there's structure. But it's still a certain very profound level because it's the root of the structure that comes later. But it's not Alien Sofifne, the essence of the Sagnus is basically. So, Atik is extremely high level, but within the structure is the most abstract level of the structure, so to speak. That's the, that's the reconciliation. So in other words, our Rizal reveals for us that that which it says in Idr does not mean Mahusa it's Musa, it's Mahusa it's Musa of the Esos Why do we have to get the Kav from Malchus to Malchus? Why do we have to seem to be pushing Kav away? What difference is that? 
Well, it just fills the picture in. Remember, the Kav is coming from the ten spheres of Gnuzis. He's adding which, which part of the ten, 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 ten hidden spheres of Gnuzis. Yeah, he's just really filling in to tell you exactly that's coming from the lowest part. Mm -hmm. Let me finish the chapter and let me just see if he adds anything more. But I think that he's already answered the question. He may spell it out a little further. Let me see. It looks to me like he's starting another little piece here. Now, an ak, adam kad min yeshi gulum v'yeshe. Gulum v'yeshe literally means circles and line. It's a new, also a new, a new expression here. So gulum v'yeshe literally is makif and pnimi. Sev klam, mal klam. She nefesh v'ruach. That's the levels of nefesh and ruach. Se nefesh ruach neshama chayichi. V'hikshu besifrei Kabbalah, and in books of Kabbalah, they ask, madula niska ba'ak neshama chayichi, how can we only mention Nefesh and Ruach? And there's no mention in Ak of Neshama, Chai Yechideh. There's also three other levels of the soul. Why is it only talking about the two lowest, Nefesh and Ruach? When Masha Tirzu Azeh move on, and from what they answer, it's understood. But obviously, it would be good to find the source. The Yechideh the Ak, Zeh Inyan Esesfir Zegnuz, is Kamesh Kulun Be'ed Ensof. That Yechideh of Adam Kadman, the highest level, is not really part of Adam Kadman. That's the ten hidden spheres, the way they're encompassed in the infinite divine light. And the Kav is the level of Chaya. Or Neshama, the third level. That is drawn from Yechida to manifest within Ak. Now he adds here. And the level of Yechida is the Bechinus Atik. So, what would second? So, Atik... Now, Esos Vizag Agnuzis and Yechida are all the same level, basically. Bahainusha Esos Vizag Agnuzis, Heim Bchinus Atik the Ak. So the hidden spheres, that is the level of Atik and Ak, and that's the answer. Ak Nefesh Ruach is Ak itself. The Shama or Yechaya is the Kav, and Yechida is Atik of Ak, which is rooted or is the Esos Vizag Agnuzis, the ten hidden spheres. I am Asher Kosher Lekam and Peter Kobzayin. And look what we learned later, what we said later in chapter 27. Oh, now, now he, he does spell it out. Okay. He just, this was just really giving us all the levels. Let's, Valpi Zayyutura, it's, according to this, is, on, is answered the question. Masha Mashma Bezeir Da'atik Musa Vat Musa. What it appears from the Zayyar, that Atik is the essence, the core of the essence, he said. Ke Esos Vyos Agnuzo Shein Kamei Atik V'yechid Ala'ak is because the ten hidden spheres are like Atik and Yechida of Adam Kadman, of the primordial man. Because they're encompassed in the infinite divine light that's higher than the Tzimtzum and the Kav. Uh, that's, that's why he's adding it. Because the Kav is not Mahusiv Atzimusi. The Kav itself, the ray of light, comes only from Malchus of Ensef. Or he said Malchus de Malchus. So why is it the Bible says Rakhid? Well, it says, atmus e mamash. And that's why Atik is called Atmos. So it's relative Atmos, basically. Pretty much. So it's Atmos because we. No, no, one, one second. Let's mm -hmm. put it this way. When you're talking about the Kav and Ak and these levels, you're talking about extremely high levels here. Okay, See, so again, we, for us, we're dismissive. We'll say, oh, one second. Okay, that Atik, Echmer Atik, there's a whole alien self, even they had symptoms, that's bleak wool. We're big, we're big symptoms. Yeah. No, yeah. we're talking about higher than the wool. Higher than Esosphere Sagnusis. It's higher than Ak, Atik. Atik is still Esosphere Sagnusis. He just said at the beginning of this chapter that there's a whole level that doesn't have any spheres at all. And nevertheless, even though it's Atmus Imam, you still can, in the Hasker, you can mention the, 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 the skull, Amen, eyes. Which demonstrate, which, which show on. The fact that there's ten spheres, because it's it's still as a sphere saying loses. We're not talking here a level that's higher than that. Because a shayim b'sherish shemakar kav, and all this is in the root and the source of the kav. In concluding, I will be eating soft shul pchins gili meetz and any shayat shom spheres, but an infinite divine light. This is revealed from the etzem, and definitely higher than that. There's no not shayich spheres altogether. There's no structure at all. What he's done here is really, he's moved from Achlifu Dechtayu in chapter 13, which is 
Nessus Firs of Atsilis. Moved to Shtei Kachol Machshava, how it's in the Divine Lamaila. He moved all the way here in chapter 14. And in 15, he moved into the Esos Firs Agnusis before the symptom and that whole level of Atik and stuff like that, and, and so on. One second, I want to see one thing. In the previous chapter, you also spoke about Atik. Okay, so that's Atik, fine. Are mentioned other places, the earlier Chassidus a lot? We mean earlier Chassidus. Of course. Yeah, I mean the, the Midler Rebbe and the Son of Tzedek? And the Alter Rebbe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kitzur, the summary of chapter 15, the Shosheh Edis, the root of the energies, are the ten hidden spheres, but Edis of Shalif Gantzimtzim. So the Yeshleim of Zehu, in the beginning of the chapter, is talking about the whole level of the ten spheres. So the ten spheres, the root of the energies, are the ten hidden spheres in the infinite divine light before the Tzimtzum. Shen Sheir Shagvul. It's the root of Gvul. Not like the Ramak. The Eden Seif Atzmei Hu Eir Ablikbo. And the infinite divine light itself, that's, the inf- that's infinite light. Energy. The S of Gnus is Zel Bhinis Atik the Ak. These ten spheres of Gnus hidden spheres are the Atik of Ak. That's why they're considered the level of the essence. Nevertheless, it's applicable there. The, the, the dimensions of skull, eyes, and mind. Okay, conclude here. So we did chapter 15, pages 24 and 25.